Welcome back to DK Sports Radio. This is Chris Carter, and you're listening to Don't Get Me Started. Don't get me started on Thursday Night Football. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this this thing that no one ever really cares about, there's never any really good games on Thursday night unless your favorite team's playing, is going to get renewed for at least another five years. The NFL uh, just com- comes out with, there was a re- uh, with a report saying that Fox will broadcast Thursday Night Football after reaching a five-year deal with the NFL, which means that we will now be watching Thursday Night Football at least until 2022. This comes after a year in which people seriously considered whether or not Thursday Night Football should continue. It's been a point of contention both for fans and players for a long time. But does Roger Goodell care? No. Does the NFL care? No. What we're dealing with here, I'm wearing shades. I'm just going to put my shades down right now. Because this is what we're dealing with here is the fact that the NFL is money grabbing. They're going after prime time dollars, prime time ad revenue, getting the getting those viewers. But if they if they've been paying attention to anything, they need to see one. Their players are getting hurt more. They're losing superstars. If you can you can make literally an all pro roster of the players that that got hurt this season, whether it's Aaron Rodgers, Odell Beckham Jr. I don't mean hurt. I mean out for this season. Aaron Rodgers, Odell Beckham Jr., Richard Sherman. You know, the list went goes on and on. David Johnson, uh, you know, for the, the running back for the uh, for the Cardinals. Um, you know, there was just player after player after player that was knocked out for the season. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, and it's just it's you've, you've put yourself in a situation where, you know, it's a physical game. You know, there's risks about it, uh, about the game. Yet. Yet still, we're going to say, yeah, you know what? So what if a team plays on Monday night and then they have a game on Thursday night? That's not that's no problem. Or if they have a game on even Sunday, it's ridiculous. You when you play football, you need a full week to recharge. And occasionally, yeah, I understand there's some short weeks where four or five days can pass and you and you and you can play again. But come on, when you play Sunday, you usually just rest Monday. You go you're going over film Monday and Tuesday. You practice you practice maybe some Tuesday, your serious practice Wednesday. But when you have a game on Thursday, you have to do your only serious practice maybe Tuesday. And then Wednesday you have to go through walkthroughs because you can't go through anything hard on the day before a game. That's not good idea as far as as far as football training. Um, and then you're right back into it. And now you're exposing yourself. Not only are you are you uh, less prepared for that game? Um, not only your coaches and your t- and your players not as aware of everything as they should be, and not only are there are, are, are is this going to be a, a rush situation and they're going to have to someone's going to have to travel to another city and all this, but now they're also they're still banged and bruised up, you know, and that's what one thing that that any NFL. Uh, expert or player will tell you nobody is 100% healthy by the end of the season. And when you put players into situations like this, it only uh, makes those chances rise. And on, on top of the sense, as a business model, it just doesn't make sense to keep pushing this Thursday night football thing. The the NFL's ratings are down. Ever, and, and, and people can say whether it's about this or whether it's about that, but Thursday night football has detracted the amount of people that 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 care about the NFL, you know, yes, it's prime time viewers. It's one of the you know, it's on Thursday night, so it's competing with you know a, a prime television slot. But if you look at how many how many people enjoy the NFL, people prefer to watch um, to watch Sunday one o'clock, four o'clock games. Even S- Sunday night is okay to me, and Monday Monday night's fine. Monday night's a good tradition. Um, Sunday night, it's just like it's, it's like after a while, you get a little t- even 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 the most football diehards. You're like, this is a this is a little bit of football overload because Thursday night you watch a game, and uh, if it's if it's not a a prime game, why why am I turning that on? Because I know that in 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 two days I can watch college football, and then on Sunday I can watch a whole slew of games. Uh, but if you're looking at, at a Thursday night football, and most of the Thursday night matchups in 2017 were not uh, exactly thrilling um, or, you know, matchups that, you know, that someone said, hey, I'm, I'm going to watch this. Um, in fact, they, they, they were all. But, but, I mean, I get it. You know, Fox paid a whole bunch of money. Uh, Fox is going to pay more than three billion dollars over the length of, of their deal, um, over six hundred million per year, um, as reported by USA USA Today Sports. 
um, in order to get the rights to, to air Thursday Night Football, which I guess that was the NFL's plan all along because they've been doing it on NFL Network for the longest, and none of the major networks seem to jump at it. Uh, they were the NFL network. The NFL network was happy to to host it, and that's what they were doing with that. But um, Fox is like, "Hey, we'll, we'll we'll get that. We'll get those viewers." Um, and now the NFL that's three more. That's three billion more dollars to them over the over the next uh, five years. And it's just uh, as a person who respects the game, I, you know, I really en- enjoy the game of football um, from uh, from several different angles. Whether it's enjoying it as a fan, you know, you know, enjoying it as an analyst. Or just you know, just kind of reading about how the league progresses. Uh, I think the biggest thing to get the is that the NFL gets in its own way. Um, three years ago, Mark Cuban proposed and proposed the idea that the NFL was ten years away from an implosion, simply because it's grabbing, it's it's reaching out and trying to grab too much money. It's way too impulsive with its decisions. It reacts to everything it sees and just try, and tries to put a band aid on everything. Um, instead of thinking of wholesome ways to solve a problem. Um, and I think at the time, people were talking about the no more situation when it came to you know Ray Rice and how everything was going down about that. The only reason the NFL even made sure that they suspended Ray Rice for an extended period of time is because their initial suspension, a suspension of two games, was considered a joke. Um, and it should have been considered a joke. And then that led to several other issues and, and more problems. And the NFL just continues to pile up bad PR on top of bad PR on top of bad PR. And, you know, on top of that is also player safety. A lot of a lot of people are pushing their children to say, hey, we're not going to let our kid play football because it's too dangerous. And, uh, and I mean, some things you can't take out of football. You know, I, I I'm one of the people that will tell you, you know what? You know, some people that, that say it's always dirty if there's if there's an incidental headshot. Sometimes that happens. People are wearing helmets. People are moving really fast. These you're dealing with guys that run four, four, 40 times, you know, try try telling them to target, you know, uh, a space of about six inches, uh, you know, with 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 their body while they're moving that fast. And someone else is moving that fast. You're going to get violent collisions. But uh, but if you're really concerned about player safety, one, you'd shorten preseason because you don't need four games. And two, you would um, you wouldn't try to be talking about lengthening the season because that's what people talk. That's what the NFL has been trying to do for a long time. And you and two, you would take away Thursday night football. You know, if you want to look at the ratings, look at how look at how far they've dropped in the time since Thursday night football has become has become a thing. Um, and, if, and if you look at even the specific weeks um, that that Thursday night football through week ten, um, it was there was a I think there was a five point seven. Uh, percent drop in in the in the ratings between 2017 and 2016 and some people will say oh it's because of the protests well if you were reading the the same survey that some people said oh 26 percent of those who watch fewer games said that uh that the national anthem protests were you know were, were the reason uh when the the survey actually if you actually read the survey and not what uh what a random person took out of it um the survey actually shows it was just three percent of all sports fans said that the protests stopped them from watching NFL games. So it's it's that's not the problem with the NFL. The problem with the NFL is that they are they're oversaturating their market. They need to realize that and the NF, NFL they have a great product. You don't need to try and innovate too many things when it comes to when your games are showed. Sunday at 1, Sunday at 4, Sunday night, Monday night. Bang. That's a great weekend. You had a good time and everything's hunky dory there. Um you don't need Thursday night. You don't need Friday night. You don't need Tuesday night. You just need your regular schedule, and 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 you'll rock with that. And people and people will enjoy that, and it won't and it won't cause a whole bunch of hum- humbug. But ah, don't get me started on how on, on why for whatever reason we're now committing to another five years of of this problem. Um, and I mean, you look at you look at a lot of the other issues that go that go around. In the in, in this league, it's like this is something so simple that they could solve. I mean, they were talking about it this year. They said, you know what? Maybe we should pull back on Thursday night football. But no, we're going to be stuck with it some more. So great job, NFL. We're going to have to watch more really boring games on Thursday night that don't have that much of an impact on the season. And there were some games this year that were a little bit more exciting. But all in all, it's like, come on, you know, the you know a lot of these games they need to be on Sunday at one with the rest of the games. And, and allow people to enjoy their Thursday nights and thirst for football more. Don't oversaturate the market. Don't create, don't create more problems. Leave, leave people wanting more football. 
But that's what got me started this week. Be sure to listen to more great content here at DK Sports Radio. We got a lot of content coming up for you. Um, Steelers, Pirates, Penguins, it's all coming at you. Uh, Steelers, you know, yeah, I know season's over, but we still got great co- draft coverage. Uh, as I speak, Dale Lolly is currently in the Super Bowl right now. He's, or he's a- in Minneapolis covering the Super Bowl right now. Um, and he'll have he'll have some great stories. We'll, we'll be talking to him when he gets back uh, from his trip in Coldsville. Um, I'm glad to be not in Coldsville, even though Pittsburgh's not exactly warm right now. But we got lots of other great stuff that's going to come up. I want to. There's a lot of other things that get me started. So if you want to listen to that, give us a follow on Apple. You know, follow our podcast you know, ch- or check the live feed on DKPittsburghSports.com. We always got great content for you. Discussions, debates coming from all of the Penguins, Pirates, Steelers, Pitt, Penn State. You name it, we talk about it. If it's Pittsburgh sports, from Chris Carter, NFL analyst, DK Pittsburgh Sports. You got me started.